by Andrew Larson. Illustrated by Irene Luxbacker. Published by Kids Can Press. Theo loved Papa's old house. She loved Papa's old garden. Papa used to tell Theo all about the different flowers while they sat together under the maple tree. Papa's new apartment didn't have a garden. Are you going to put flowers out here on the balcony? asked Theo one day. I think it's too windy for flowers, answered Papa. What about plastic flowers? suggested Theo. We can fill the whole balcony. Hmm, said Papa. Then it would be a plastic garden. I know, said Theo. We could have an imaginary garden. Papa's eyes lit up. Theo and Theo and Papa planned their imaginary garden before spring had even come. On the first Saturday of spring, Papa bought a great big blank canvas. He also bought a pair of matching gardening hats for himself and Theo. Papa put the canvas out on the balcony. Theo looked at the canvas. What should we do first, she asked. Let's put a stone wall at the back of the garden, answered Papa. The vines will need to hold on to something as they reach for the sun. Papa got out his paints. He mixed a bit of white and a bit of black. Together, they made gray. Stroke by stroke, stone by stone, Papa built a wall. It stretched from one side of the garden to the other. Above the stone wall, Theo painted a soft blue sky. Then Papa mixed some green, some red, and some blue. Together, they made brown. He spread the paint at the foot of the wall, creating a bed of soil. There. But that's enough work for one day, Papa said. Next time, we'll be ready to do some planting. Papa, I love gardening with you, said Theo. And I love gardening with you, Theo, said Papa. On Monday afternoon, Papa and Theo went back into the garden. The garden is waking up after a long winter, said Papa, as he dipped his brush into the green paint. He painted tiny stems. The first flowers coming up are crocuses, he continued and look at all the scylla. Papa dotted the crocus stems with little drops of color, yellow, purple, white. Theo dotted the scylla stems with little drops of color, blue, blue, blue. What now, Papa? asked Theo. Papa put a dab of red just above the stone wall. He added a small dab of brown. There was a head. Then he swept around the red with brushes of brown. There was a tail. And there was a wing. Next he made three neat yellow jots. There was a beak, and there was a pair of skinny legs. Then he added a single black dot. There was an eye. It must be spring. A robin has come to visit our garden, said Papa. Look, he's having lunch, added Theo. She painted a tiny pink earthworm in the robin's beak. He's not the only one who is hungry, laughed Papa. Let's get ourselves a snack, too. A few weeks later, Papa prepared to leave on holiday. He asked Theo to take care of the garden. But Papa, how will I know what to do? Theo worried. She had never gardened by herself before. Well, the tulips and daffodils should blossom while I'm away, said Papa, and the vines should begin to climb the wall. He kissed her on each cheek. Don't fret, Theodora. When you see the garden, you'll know just what to do.
On Sunday morning, Theo looked into the garden. The crocuses and Scylla were gone. The garden was filled with a new growth of stems, and the vines had begun their climb up the stone wall, just like Papa said they would. Theo put on her gardening hat and picked up a paintbrush. She knew just what to do. She topped the tulip stems with blooms of color, orange, purple, pink. She topped the daffodil stems with blooms of color, yellow, yellow, yellow. But something was missing. Then Theo remembered, blue, 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 forget-me-nots, Papa's favorite flower. But still, there was something missing. Theo thought and thought. Then, smiling, she added a few dashes to the back of the garden, against the gray stone wall. There, she said. Theo could hardly wait until Papa returned from his holiday.